Hi, this is Gary Rubenstein, and this is part seven in a series of lectures to show you how to solve uh, general cubic and quartic equations. We're up to general quartic equations now. Just a bit of a refresher. In uh, tutorial number two and, and three, um, I showed you how to, uh, one, two, and three, that is, showed you how to solve equations, uh, depressed cubic equations, like c cubed equals 39z plus 380. Uh, this ended up having an answer of a little bit bigger than 9. Uh, tutorial number 5 and 4, I showed how you could take an equation like uh, w cubed plus 15w squared plus 360w minus 450 equals zero. Do a substitution. In this case, w equals, uh, it was z uh, minus b over 3a, so it was minus 5. And if you plug that into this equation, you would end up with this equation. And with z equals 9, then w is approximately equal to 4. So tutorial number 3, we did this top one, 1, 2, and 3. Tutorial 4 and 5, we showed how this bottom general cubic equation could be converted into the depressed cubic, and the solution to the depressed cubic tells us the solution to the general cubic. Well, today we go a little bit further and into a general quartic equation. I'm going to use as my primary example this equation, x to the fourth plus 8x to the third plus 30x squared minus 4x minus 44 equals 0. This has two real solutions. One's about 1.1 and the other one's about negative 1.35. Uh, first of all, a, a quartic equation that has all terms needs to be converted first. And uh, just like with the cubic equation, there was a, a, a way to make a new variable that would make the cubic term disappear. In the quartic equation, that happens also. We say uh, we're going to replace x with y minus b over 4a instead of 3a. a is 1, b is 8, so this becomes y minus 2. Now, when you replace all the x's with y minus 2's, you would get this new equation, which is y to the fourth plus 6y squared minus 60y plus 36 equals 0. So this is depressed quartic. It has no cubic term. Now here comes the clever tricks. First step that you do is you bring the 60y over to this side and you subtract the 36. Now, <clears throat> we want to make both of these sides into perfect squares. Uh, the left one is going to be perfect square with a fourth degree, second degree, and a constant. And the right is going to have a uh, second degree, first degree, and a constant. Well, we need to get some squareds on the right-hand side. So if I add 6y squared to both sides, uh, the left side becomes this. And the right side becomes 6y squared plus 60y minus 36. Now the right hand, uh, so this is a neat trick, you add this to both sides and that way this thing will always be uh, even, which is what we want, makes it easier to make it a perfect square. Now um, this thing's not a perfect square yet, it would need to have a 36 right here. So I'm going to complete the square again, if you uh, cut this term in half and square it you get 36. you got to add 36 to the right hand side also. Now the left side is a perfect square which we can factor into that. Uh, the right side, uh, it was just sort of coincidental that this 36 minus 36 and plus 36 canceled out. That doesn't happen usually, and that doesn't actually make the question any easier either. Because now I have uh, the left side is a perfect square, but the right side isn't. Um, we need to somehow do something to both sides so that both sides are perfect squares. And here's where a very clever trick was 
discovered. The idea was if I add in an extra variable, which I'll call z, to the left side, well, the right-hand side has to change also. Now, when you add z into the parentheses here, just give you a feel for what, what happens. I'll show you how much bigger y squared plus 6 plus z squared is than just regular y squared plus 6. If I think of it as y squared plus 6 plus z squared, and I multiply that out using a sort of foil, I would get that, which was my original thing. Uh, the outer and the inner would become 2z y squared plus 6. And the last thing would become plus z squared. Now, this over here is what I'm going to need to add to the right-hand side. So I get 2z y squared plus 6 plus z squared. Now, when I combine like terms, uh, the 2z gets multiplied by the y squared, and that gets combined with the 6. So I end up with 2z plus 6 y squared. Uh, there's only one y term. That's the 60y. So I'll just put that in here. Uh, as far as the constant term, the 2z gets multiplied by the 6, and the z squared is there also. So I have a constant term of z squared plus 12z. Now the major trick here is that we want to find the value of z. Any value of z is going to make the left side into a perfect square, but only certain values of z are going to make the right side into a perfect square. In order for the right side to be a perfect square, if you look back at the last tutorial, number six, uh, a quadratic is a perfect square trinomial when b squared equals 4ac. And we're going to find the z value that makes that happen. So b squared minus 4ac needs to equal 0 on this thing on the right-hand side. Uh, but b is 60, and a is 2z plus 6, and c is z squared plus 12z. That's the thing that has to equal 0. Well, when you simplify this thing out, you end up with z to the third plus 15z squared plus 360z minus 450 equals 0. Well, if you go back to tutorial number five, you'll see this is exactly the equation that we, that we saw. We end up turning it into the depressed cubic equation, w to the third equals 39w plus 380. That leads us to an answer of w is a little bit bigger than 9, which means z is a little bit bigger than 4. And we found the magic z value. So when we plug that z back into this top equation here, we end up with y squared plus 10 squared, I'm going to call it 4 for now, is equal to 14y squared plus 60y plus 64. Now again, z isn't really equal to 4, so this thing on the right isn't exactly a perfect square, but for our purposes, it's close enough. So since this is essentially a perfect square trinomial, it's going to factor into the square root of 14y plus 8 squared. And now you can take the square root of both sides and get y squared plus 10 equals plus or minus square root of 14y plus 8. Now I'm just going to use the, uh, the positive one on the right because that becomes this quadratic equation, y squared minus root 14y plus 2 equals 0. And when you run that one through the quadratic formula, you get two answers, y equals 3.1 and y equals 0.65. But remember from the beginning that x equals y minus 2, which means x equals 1.1 and x equals minus 1.35. Done.